Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Tracy Jones, an associate director at Guidehouse. Ms. Jones, good to have you with us. Hi, nice to be here. And our topic is AI transformation and Guidehouse has a lot to say and a lot of expertise in this area. And why don't we begin with the basic story and your view of how AI is changing the way companies and government agencies will operate or need to operate? I think we're already really seeing um, the impacts that AI is starting to have. We have teams that are out there doing fraud detection, using Elasticsearch to really improve um, insights for decision making, um, using optimization for software development um, and everything. And that's all great. Um, but I think we're really just at the tippity tip of Pittsburgh and where this is going. And so actually an article that McKinsey put out um, about mid last year that was looking at AI and generative AI and predictions around that. And one of the things that really caught my attention was they were talking about how in 2030, AI could be at a median level of human performance, which is only a few years away, right? I mean, when we really think about it, that's like a handful of years, six years. Um, and then they were saying by 2040, it could really be at that high level of human performance. And then around the same time, you know, Goldman Sachs came out with a really interesting article that was talking about how 25% of just the work tasks that we do here in the United States and really in Europe could pretty easily be automated. So I, when I think about what this is looking like now, and then the near future, like they're drastically different. So now we're not seeing that much because we're just starting to dip our toe into it. But I think that's gonna change really fast. And so just recognizing that it's not necessarily about jobs going away, but it is thinking about how are our jobs gonna completely change and how we work, how like our day-to-day -day operations and yeah, really preparing now for that transformation. And especially with government thinking about this little opportunity that we have to really focus on readiness. Right. So if AI can perform at near human performance levels sometime in the next 10 or 15 years, you might be able to get away without having it as an organization, but you would really be at a disadvantage people for people. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be at a huge disadvantage. And I think, you know, and I think in terms of government, one of the things that I hear a lot of, and which kind of concerns me is people saying, oh, it's government, they have time, they always operate slower, they're, you know, they, they take on technology and adopt it a little bit slower. And I do think that that's true, that we're going to have a little bit of a lag here with AI, but I think that that lag is going to be compressed. And the reason why I think it's going to be compressed is because there's so much competition internationally. And really, when you think about AI and how we utilize it, and if we do it you know, ethically and transparently. And, and it's going to determine how we show up in the global market with the economy, political leadership, but also how we can respond to, you know, global changes and needs um, and really also protect constituents, right? Protect them from outside forces, but then also from, you know, accidents with AI and, you know, misuse of AI. So it's really, I think, important. And, you know, if you look at like, what's recently come out from this presidential administration, you have the executive order that dropped in October. And then you also have like just a few days ago, the call for, you know, AI talent, which is really telling that there's gonna be a push, right? So in this little lag period where um, you have some time, I think there's some really core foundational things that government should be focusing on to prepare. So that when they do launch full stream, they're doing it, you know, in the most productive way possible, but also ethically and, and transparently, which I think is critical for trust. Um, and those foundations are really things like looking at your governance structures now, looking at building AI into your strategy now, really starting to think about ethical frameworks and principles that you want to apply and those mechanisms for oversight. Um, Data literacy and AI literacy is really important um, in getting not just the leadership spun up on everything that's coming, but also staff and just the ability to work in that new environment. And then also, I think one of the important things that we really need to start thinking about now is as we start to implement these efficiencies, there are going to be workforce impacts. And so how do we think about change management and culture cultivation 
how do we think about how we work with that workforce to really keep them engaged, keep work meaningful, um, and really get the most value out of both AI and also humans. When you mentioned the idea now to figure out ways or think about ways you can build AI into your strategy, what does that mean? How do you go about that? What's your best advice for an agency to start thinking in that manner? Yeah, so that's really a great question. So with strategy, I just want to say in general, like a lot of the data strategies that are out there, a lot of times they'll have, you know, the vision and goals, and that's super important. We want to have a vision that we march in. But sometimes goals get really detailed and laid down with like exactly how they're going to do something and who's going to be involved. And what I would say with AI is that because things are changing so fast, I think it makes a lot of sense to have simpler strategies that have vision and direction, but these higher level goals and then using use cases that are developed between your business and technology folks to really start bringing together the ideas of what can you all accomplish with AI um, and what does that really what does that really mean? Is it feasible? How much of a benefit are you going to get? Is it a primary driver or a secondary driver in like the value chain? Um, really thinking about what is the real return on investment? Um, a lot of times when we think about cost, I think we as humans underestimate cost and over in our brains dream of the benefits of something. But it's really having those discussions of what is the true cost and the benefits that you can really hone in on the use cases that you want. And then using those use cases to show value against the goals that you've set for yourself in a roadmap so that you're really getting sort of, you know, quick wins, but also incremental improvements and, and driving forward and just building on success. And who should be involved in those discussions and that planning? So. Definitely leadership. And I think, you know, having a strong leadership voice is really important, but I think it's really bringing together voices from across the different business units, um, as well as technology. I think this world that we're going into really makes it more important than ever to have those cross-functional teams. Because if you just put a really smart person who does data science really well off by themselves, they're gonna come up with some great solutions, but it may not be what the business needs. Right. So it's really having both of those voices together um, and really, an inter, you know, more voices across the enterprise, I think, is, is really huge. And I would think on the governance side, the thing you mentioned, you know, the first kind of bullet point for preparation, that that would have to occur simultaneously with the strategy thinking because you want to go at it in an orderly way. And that starts with governance. So what are the elements of good governance and what does it look like to begin planning how you how you have the governance for AI and exercise it? Yeah, so we should definitely be looking at governance now. And one thing that I'll just say that I think is a really interesting finding, um, and then I'll totally go into answering your question. So just recently, Guidehouse and CDO Magazine joined forces on a gen AI survey that went out and folks from across different industries responded. And what we heard back was really interesting. 87%, 87% said that they thought that AI, the ability to do AI was really tied strongly to data management and governance, right? So it's absolutely critical. And I think right now, if you if, if you were to like take a step back and just look at data governance now, which data is really important, right? Because it's like feeding the AI and them in the product. Data governance, in government right now is already sometimes very complex and difficult, challenging. So I think when we're adding to that AI, there's a few kind of ground rules that we should be, be playing with. And some of that is um, looking at how AI itself can improve the existing governance process, can make it more efficient, can make it more automated, um, and bringing just overall efficiencies to that. And then the other thing is I think we have to look at the overall governance model that each organization has. And this is gonna be a different conversation for each organization, but looking at that model and saying, okay, what in here has to be restructured or retooled in order to effectively handle AI? And when we talk about AI governance, it's not just the algorithm. Like a lot of people think about AI and they, and they talk about the life cycle and then they're like, you know, 
find the data, create the algorithm, da, 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 create the product. But the actual life cycle of AI is very continuous. And so once that algorithm produces something, there needs to be ongoing monitoring of the output to make sure that it's not changing over time, that it's really aligning the ethical principles that you set forward. And then also to utilize all of that data that you're producing, feeding it back into your overall data ecosystem and using it for other potential AI or just you know other insights that you need to drive the organization. So um, did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. In fact, I wanted to ask you about one additional thing, and that is the idea that you have to make sure that people are trained on the front end of what they ask of the AI, the query, and that can affect you know what comes out and that in the business and professional settings we're talking about, you have to have people that know how to kind of play the violin, if you will, to get the outcome the organization wants. Yeah, and I will say, so I think a lot of what he's talking about is specifically the generative AI and how you can ask the questions and really drive insights through things like, you know, chat GPT. I would say, yes, that and mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff, right? Because ultimately AI encompasses a whole lot, everything from like RPA and like little automations to logical decision making to the generative and like deep learning that we're now seeing, but it's it's really understanding what is it that you're trying to solve from a business perspective and um, what tool best helps meet that because it's not always going to be just in some cases, it may be as simple as putting in place, you know, uh, a lot of robotic process engineering to like clean up some processes that are going to help improve your overall flow of information, which is going to improve some of your data management issues and your governance. So I just think it's a it's it's a lot of tools in a toolbox. And I think that's one of the reasons why data and AI literacy are so important. And they go hand in hand, right? Because if you don't understand data, you're not going to have good AI products. And that analysis of data before you really dive in and commit to something is critical. And so really having that um, training for not just leaders, but it really needs to be enterprise-wide and different people are going to different levels of training, but there needs to be data training, AI training. People really need to understand like what are the options and like how do you pick the option that's going to best meet your need? Do you have the data to, to really get the solution that you're driving for? Do you have the data to train the model? And then do you have the data to appropriately test it? And those, you know, so... Right. So then data literacy and data understanding should also reside with the people that own and generate the data and not only with the data scientists. Yeah, I think there needs to be, I mean, I think this is one of the things that I'm really trying to say is that there needs to be a lot of education at a lot of levels to really understand both the data and the AI side of things so that they can effectively work together and bring those different solutions to bear. Let's talk about the ethical considerations because this comes up uh, yeah. simply because of the danger that AI can bring and kind of speed up bias mm -hmm. and give it you know, wings when it only had feet before and you want to avoid that. So tell right. us some of the ethical implications and how you get your organization sensitized to them and avoid bringing those into your AI efforts. Yeah, so this is this is a really big area that I, I care about um, because especially for government, right? If if we don't have strong ethics and how we're handling data and developing AI, we're not going to have trust. And to really have trust, you have to have transparency. You have to have explainability. There has to be an understanding and a belief that government is appropriately managing the AI and overseeing the outputs and validating that those are, um, you know, before it goes into production, that it meets their ethical standards, but also that the outputs over time continue to meet those ethical standards. And so some of the ways we can do that, I think, you know, one of them I mentioned was having that framework and principles and having guidance for people so that there's really clear guidance and guardrails. Um, Another part of it is really bringing cross-functional teams together so that when you're looking at an issue, you're looking at it from different perspectives. And that diversity of perspectives is really going to help you early, hopefully, identify ethical 
issues like potential bias and to either remediate those or to take something you know out and keep working on it before it goes into production. Um, there's a lot of other ways too. So for example, just the, the oversight mechanisms that you put in place. And I know in some places they have ethical review boards, right? Now, I don't know if that would work as well in commercial sector because there have been instances, and I'm not gonna go into specifics where big firms have kind of penalized people for you know, calling out ethical stuff. But in government, <laughs> where it's like really to serve the people, ethical review boards, I think, could play an important role in looking at something end to end before it goes, you know, before it's approved to go into a use case. And then also looking at something before it's produced as that extra validation. So that's always a consideration. And then also just the arsenal of documentation and checklists and tools that you create for people is really going to enable them enable them to um, go through the process more easily. So that it's something that is, I think, approachable. I think that's the most important thing. It has to be approachable. It can't be something that is just a policy out there on a paper that no one really understands how to get to. One of the most important things for agencies to do is to really document and promulgate, and by promulgate, I mean communicate out there to everyone, like the processes for how to do this. Because the biases can come in in ways that traditional biases in the human psyche can harm other people for whatever reason wrongly. Whereas in AI, you also have the additional problem of programmatic or technical outcome bias that is right. seems logical, but is not correct for what your program is trying to achieve. And what's really interesting, some of the stuff that we've seen is, you know, we are all as humans naturally biased, even if we don't want to believe that we are. There's bias in everything that we do. And some of that, when you're developing programs, developing, and it's either looking at data that was produced by humans, or it's an algorithm that was produced by humans, and accidentally, you can build in bias. And then with generative AI, it becomes super easy because it's learning from everything that's out there, right? and actually compounding in many ways the bias. And there have been some really interesting examples of um, where they've taken, where they've actually taken pictures and, and data and then the algorithm and, and would actually produce something much more biased than whatever was it was originally looking at. So there's that compounding effect that can happen as well. And would you add up, add up all of these different items and all of these different foundational elements, it all comes down to people really. And yeah. the technology is there and it's not that difficult to implement once you have all these other pieces in place. So really then the, I would say, judging from what you've, what you've told us, it's the training and preparation of the workforce that might be the most important part here to having AI success in your, in your agency. Yeah, I think it's one, I think it's one of the most important parts. And I think from a workforce perspective, um, really looking at change management and that sort of culture cultivation as ongoing and long-term. I think oftentimes, historically, when we have an, a, an, an IT project, we think about like a short-term change management project and we sort of tack it on to the end. And I think what we really think about with AI, it is an ongoing change management effort because it's going to incrementally be bringing changes to the organization over time. And there's, a, and, and you need to really have um, the workforce already understanding and talking about this before you start to implement it, right? So I think change management and having a lot of engagement is critical. The other thing that I think that we should be thinking about is doing um, assessments, impact assessments early on. So, you know, if you're a government agency and you're doing some use cases that's going to, you know, really automate some of the tasks that are out there, really forward thinking, okay, not just what data do I need and, and how do I mechanically, how do I produce this, but what are the impacts it's going to have in the workforce and how do I begin to offset any negative impacts? How do I begin to think about, you know, cross training that needs to happen? reskilling that needs to happen, moving of people to additional tasks. And maybe that's a very gradual thing for some people, like maybe a little piece of their work becomes automated and they can take on something else. And then over time they transition. But for other people, it could be a pretty significant disruption if we're not really thinking about this proactively 
and making it a priority. Because at the end of the day, like AI is fantastic, but if it doesn't serve us as humans and make life better than like really what was the what was the point? Like, so I think the human side and really trying to manage to that as effectively as possible is important. You know, there was a time when the average employee doing the average function in most organizations never had any contact with software. And that's within, you know, my memory. And so software was a big change, just dealing with screens and inputs and outputs that are happening the way computers work really took a number of years for the workforce to change over and transform to accept that. It strikes me that the introduction of AI is almost a similar type of step function in changing the way people will work. And so you really need to do that groundwork. Yeah, I think in some cases it's going to be very similar in that people are going to be exposed to AI and just have to learn new skills. But in other cases, it could be much more, you know, dramatic. Because you can have AI operating in the background and it can actually take on tasks that, you know, you, Tom, were used to doing. Well, if that task doesn't exist anymore, but you still have, you know, value and contributions, it's like needing to figure out potentially how to give you something else completely different to do or, you know, or, or what next level activity can you be working on with the support of this AI that was maybe doing something that you've historically done before. So yeah, I think it's, I think you hit it on the nail. It's, it's a lot of preparation. And the time is now, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I very much believe the time is now. And I think a lot of people think that we have more time than we do, but I think ultimately there's a ton of competition internationally. Um, and I think you don't want to be late to the game, right? Like if you remember that old, um, I don't know, I guess it was like a fable that I grew up with about the the little grasshopper that played all summer and sang songs. And then, and then in the winter, it was like, oh crap, I'm not prepared. Like, I think that our goal is to not grasshopper and to not have to ants. Like if you, if you were in the government, then it was my hope that you are helping to drive the direction that it's going and really intentionally navigating that and not saying, you know, we don't have to worry about it now when we need to transition like xyz big corporations will come in and, and help us do that like that can be part of your plan but it needs to be very intentional and you still need to be navigating it um, because i think there's too much at risk um, to not be doing that all right some terrific insight i want to thank today's guest tracy jones is an associate director at guidehouse great to have you with us thank you it was, it was a lot of fun and I'm Tom Temin. You're watching Federal News Network. Let's go back to the studio now for more on the AI and data exchange.